President Donald Trump has officially kicked off his 2020 re-election campaign and expectedly he's doing what he always does whenever there's an election that he needs to win. He's ramping up the anti-immigrant rhetoric and this time it's no different because this is what he's trying to do now presumably to mobilize and excite his base. He announced via Twitter, next week, ICE will begin the process of removing the millions of illegal aliens who have illicitly found their way into the United States. They will be removed as fast as they come in. Now just pause for a moment and think about the implications of this because he's saying that they're going to remove millions, plural. So I'm assuming that he, at a minimum, is aiming to remove at least 2 million undocumented immigrants. Well, according to Pew Research, there's approximately 10.5 million undocumented immigrants currently in the United States. So what he's saying here is he wants to remove a fifth of our entire undocumented immigrant population. Let's just assume he actually does want to do this. Can you just imagine what you would need to actually do something like this. I mean, the amount of resources you would need in terms of money would be huge in terms of personnel, in terms of expertise, as well as planning. You would need to put so much into this that you would essentially not be able to focus on anything else. On top of it just being unfeasible, think about this from a moral angle. This will inevitably result in human rights abuses even more racial profiling because we all know that if Donald Trump were to ever do something like this, this would be implemented in the most sloppy way possible and you would need to come up with a real plan, which we all know Donald Trump is incapable of doing. But I mean, even if we know that executing something like this is incredibly unlikely because it's so impractical, still the implications of this tweet here are troubling because it still tells us that regardless of the scope of this crackdown, there will be another crackdown because he's got an election to win and he knows that if he wants to keep his base excited and loyal, he's got to keep cracking down on immigrants with these draconian fascistic policies. So even if there's another crackdown, this is still bad, even if it's not going to be on that scale because what does a crackdown mean? It means that this will cause irreparable harm to vulnerable communities because they're seeking asylum oftentimes due to violence in their country caused by U.S. imperialism. And in case you haven't been paying attention, Donald Trump's administration confirmed that they have more than 13,000 children who are immigrants in U.S. custody, six of which have died in ICE custody, which journalist Ken Klippenstein learned were preventable deaths that occurred due to negligence. And because this is becoming such a big problem, well, what did ICE do? They just stopped updating the official death count. And now, as Jessica Corbett of Common Dreams reports, earlier last week, Trump administration officials revealed plans to detain migrant children at a former Japanese internment camp in Oklahoma because an influx of minors has overwhelmed shelters throughout the country. I mean, think about this. As Americans, on both sides of the political aisle, we all came together collectively and agreed that what happened during World War II, the way that we imprisoned Japanese Americans, that was a disgusting blemish on our history. One of many. But we agreed that that was bad. And now what we're doing is we're using those internment camps to lock up migrant children. It's like history keeps repeating itself and we can never learn from our mistakes. So this is absolutely outrageous and everyone who has a moral compass should be outraged by this. And in fact, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was outraged by this. And the way that she described this was, these are basically like concentration camps. So she was outraged by this. But the way that conservatives responded to our draconian anti-immigrant policies was to be outraged at the way others vocalized their disgust with these types of policies. So here's what AOC said that sparked so much outrage. The United States is running concentration camps on our southern border and that is exactly what they are. They are concentration camps and um, if that doesn't bother you I don't, 
I'm not, I like, we can have, okay, whatever. I want to talk to the people that are concerned enough with humanity to say that we should not, that never again means something. So what she said was not just accurate, but it was incredibly reasonable. It was a perfectly rational response to have to the sight of migrant children being detained. I mean, we purport to be the freest country in the world, and we are locking migrant children in cages. There are 13,000 children who are detained currently in ICE custody in harsh conditions, according to some reports. And when people vocalize outrage, well, some individuals, Liz Cheney, for example, are outraged at the outrage. So Liz Cheney tweeted, please, AOC, do us all a favor and spend just a few minutes learning some actual history. Six million Jews were exterminated in the Holocaust. You demean their memory and disgrace yourself with comments like this. Now, AOC responded saying, hey, Representative Cheney, since you're so eager to quote unquote educate me, I'm curious. What do you call building mass camps of people being detained without a trial? How would you dress up DHS's mass separation of thousands of children at the border from their parents? And she then added, and for the shrieking Republicans who don't know the difference, concentration camps are not the same as death camps. Concentration camps are considered by experts as the mass detention of civilians without trial. And that's exactly what this administration is doing. And she's exactly right. But this is exactly what Republicans do. They don't get outraged ever at the source of immorality. They get outraged at the way people describe the injustice. They get outraged and police the language of people who are reacting to what is happening. This is what they always do because it serves as an easy way to start distracting people. So we're no longer talking about migrant children in cages. We're talking about the semantics as to how we should describe migrant children being detained by ICE. And it's because Republicans and conservatives, generally speaking, they don't care about immorality. These are not moral people. Liz Cheney's father is a mass murderer who should spend the rest of his life in prison. But of course, you know, the true bad guys are the people like AOC who denounce these types of fascistic immigration policies and human rights abuses. They're the bad guys because they didn't describe this injustice appropriately, according to people like Liz Cheney. Here's the thing, regardless if Donald Trump is able to execute this type of crackdown or not, we should all be outraged at this. We're locking children in cages. 13,000 migrant children are being detained. And people are more outraged at the outrage. The state of American politics is so toxic, so amoral currently, that if we don't come together and agree on a real objective standard of morality, because I don't believe in moral relativism, but if we don't agree on a standard of morality, if we all craft our own standards of what is and isn't moral, then I don't know how we could ever come together as a country. Because anyone who dismisses the treatment of migrant children by Trump's administration, there's someone that I can never work with. I can never work with these people. So it's a sad state of American affairs where whenever there is actually outrage for the way that we're detaining migrant children, well, the people who speak out get told to shut up or they get language policed for not talking about it in a way that conservatives deem appropriate. It's sickening.